Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to 3D Rave. So today we're going to be talking about a new feature in Twinmotion 2024.1 preview and that's going to be the populate function and especially in the populate you can see that previously we used to have like paint and scatter but now we have spacing and area as well. So we're going to be talking especially about these two but let's talk about all of these guys today in order to explain it uh, i have a hundred meter square plane so we're going to be using paint function first of all let me drop an object here and by the way you can use any of the other objects but there's one limitation and that's going to be like you can't use the animated objects with this one for example if you wanted to go to people let me go here animated objects so if I want to drop it, you can't do that. Okay, that's the first limitation. And the second one is that you can't place the objects in a vertical direction. So imagine if we had a wall and we wanted to place some of the objects along the height of the wall, we wouldn't be able to do that. Apart from that, this is working perfectly. Uh, we have already placed a box and let's try to paint it. And you can see that it's just a simple paint. Basically, you can change the diameter of the paint and that's going to determine how many objects we paint uh in a single brush okay and the second option is going to be of course the eraser tool uh, so that we can erase whatever you want to okie dokie the next option is going to be scatter it was also present in the 2023 version now you can either paint one object or you can select all of them and once you hit scatter tool whatever surface you select on is going to fill it up as you can see that it has filled up this whole surface now what we can do if you want to remove randomly any of the objects you can just click and it will start removing randomly but if you want to pinpoint something just click on the brush tool and then start removing and that will get rid of the object itself straightforward easy peasy now the next two functions are going to be really really important actually these are really powerful and if you've used like 3ds max before you would know that in 3ds max you have forest pack that's an extra add-on basically you can you can buy that and there are similar functions in that as well but that one is much more powerful but this one of course this is in really initial stages so it's going to improve drastically so let's get started once you click on spacing what you can do is that you can define multiple points for spacing and let's say I have I'm happy with this one so I right click it has placed the objects along this line now as you can see that I drew this line in like really haphazard pattern what I can do is that if you can see if I reduce the tension it's going to make it really smooth and if I increase the tension it's going to make those points really really sharp imagine that if you are working on a project where we have a circular road you can keep the tension really really low approximately zero and that would be a good idea but if you're placing your objects along a rectangular building i think in that case you have to keep the tension like 100 percent the random seed is basically going to determine different variations it is going to become much more apparent in the in the next one so just hold on for that the next one is going to determine the random lateral offset it's going to determine that along the path and how much distance those objects are going to be placed randomly okay so as you can see that the first object has a different distance as compared to this object and same goes for the other objects so basically they are offset from their central location by a certain distance that we want how many objects that we want along our path that's going to be determined by two different ways either we could give the count for example we have 10 at the moment we can increase that or according to the distance so if we have like distance of 4.5 meters so it's going to place the objects accordingly then we have the option for random order as well so it, for different objects the placing is going to be in a random order it's, it's not going to follow a certain pattern now the next options are really really important and let me tell you why uh, these are on per object basis imagine that you were spreading vegetation on a terrain and you had like five different types of trees or bushes that you wanted to scatter if you want one type of object to be more let me go to tree let me take this one and let me take this one as well as you can see that now if i select any of the objects i can change the setting for only that 
object. I can say that the scale offset is going to determine that as compared to the initial scale, let's say initial value was 3 meters for the tree height. If we increase that is going to increase all of the trees and that scale. Now the powerful thing is that as great as this one looks, you can basically in order to make sure that this one looks realistic because in reality all of the trees are not going to be the same height. So you can basically randomly change the scale. So some trees are going to be bigger, some trees are going to be smaller. There's a variation so it becomes a beauty. Same goes for the rotation. If you want to change the rotation for all of the trees in the same angle, you can change that. But you should also introduce some of the variation so that one tree is facing in one direction and the other tree is facing in the other direction. You can basically see that if I go to the top view, you can see that how they are rotating in different directions. Let me show you something really fun. Since we have made this path, it is really, really possible that after some time you think, uh, that's not a really good idea. Maybe I should change the path. You can basically pick point, pick any of these points, and then you can change the path and everything should update accordingly. So if I want to say that this path seems much better for me, there you go. You have completely updated the whole path and now you can place your buildings in between these guys. The next option that I wanted to show you is that that's the snap to surface. So basically, let's say that I have I pick one point and I raise this in the z-axis. Once you do that and it hit snap to surface, some of the trees are going to be floating in the air as you can see that. Okay. So if you want to snap it to the surface, you got to change that. So let me take that back. And the alignment is going to determine the alignment for the object, which is going to be basically uh, perpendicular to the surface. So this is a flat surface. So the trees are going to be perpendicular to the surface or in other terms is going to be the occurring normal face. All right. So that's going to determine that. So if you have trees on, on a surface, which is in a slope, and if you want to keep them really vertical, keep that off. But if you want to have some of the objects that are keeping the same angle of the road, let's say the cars, you can use this align function as well. That was the basically the spacing tool for placement. Let's go ahead and talk about the area. The area is really self-explanatory. Basically, you, you define a haphazard area, whatever shape you want. You close the loop and it is going to define an area in which the objects are going to be placed. Now, what's the fun part? So let me show you the, show you the random seed. Basically, if you go to the top, if you click on random seed, is it is going to create different iterations, okay, and place the trees or any of the ob objects in different locations. That's the purpose of the seed, random seed. Okay, so let's say I have done that. And if you remember the path tension, I loosen it up or I can make it really tighter and make them like straight edges. Let's define the area once again and make it like smoother or something like that. And you can click and create extra points as well. We have talked about the spacing and that's going to be the spacing between different objects. So if we keep the spacing really, really low, that's going to mean that we are going to have plenty of different objects. The next one basically is going to randomize the spacing between different objects. So that's really fun. It's going to become much more apparent if you have like a very uniform area and you have very uniform objects like cubes or something like that, then a random spacing, spacing is going to do the wonders. Probability is basically the amount of the objects or number of objects that you're going to have in your area. So if you increase that, the number of objects are going to increase. Now it's not exactly similar to spacing. The spacing is going to determine the number of trees at that certain spacing, but probability is going to determine in a probabilistic way how many trees are there. Uh, let me reduce that basically. Uh, let's go ahead with that. Now the next option is going to be a little bit tricky. Now let me tell you why. If you click on edge fall off, what's it going to do? Basically, you have to look at the objects that are at the borders, okay, or at the perimeter. So if you keep on changing that, you'll see that the objects at the border are going to be reduced in size. Not only that, they are going to be pushed inwards. So slowly they are going to disappear and they're going to go inwards from the area. So in all size, you can see that most of the trees, they have been pushed inwards. But if you have like fall of distance to 
to zero, they're going to be much more closer to the boundary. Now, the next one, let me click one of these objects and let's talk about the settings per arc. Now, this scale offset, we have already talked about that. Basically, it's going to determine the size of the of the trees or any of the objects. Uh, the next one is going to make the scale random. So some of the trees are going to be larger. Some, some of them are going to be smaller, just like that. Uh, we have already talked about the rotation as well. This rotation offset is going to determine the angle for all of the trees and the rotation random is going to determine random rotation basically. Uh, we have already talked about the snap to surface and alignment tools as well. So these were the two different options that were available in, in the latest Twinmotion 2024.1 and I found it really really impressive the way the twin motion guys they are going ahead i mean they are doing an amazing job and it's going to be phenomenal uh let's wait i mean i'm pretty sure that soon enough it is going to be the i mean it is already in the industry standard but it is going to beat lumion like really good okay anyways thank you so much for your attention and uh if you like the content please subscribe to the channel so that you can stay updated with all of the new content that we are going to be posting thank you so much have a great day and i'll see you in the next video